there was a lot of misinformation going around in advance of Trump's Stormy Daniels hush money trial. And we want to do some fact checking. We think it's an important part of what we do here and we're going to do it. And it's a couple different factors. One is a quote that's been attributed to Stormy Daniels. This is the quote, you can see it being spread in meme form saying, I had no idea if he had penetrated me and I am a professional. He just kept yelling, I'm huge, I'm the greatest. And then he made gurgling sounds and fell asleep. Hey, it was a job and the check cleared. So they sent that to Stormy Daniels and she confirmed that that is not the case. And look, is this stupid and salacious? 100%. But she has revealed some very humiliating and embarrassing things about him in the past. There are references to mushrooms. There are talks about being spanked by a rolled up copy of I think Time Magazine. Maybe it was Forbes actually. And so it's not impossible that someone could see this and think that it was true. It sort of fits into the canon of her work. But it's not true, she did not say that, so bear that in mind. Before we continue with the story, we depend on members to keep on going. Don't wait, click join now on YouTube. Now, arguably more substantively, there is what I see as a little bit of confusion going around in terms of Donald Trump's legal strategy, his defense in this case. Because there are a lot of headlines that you might have seen going around this morning that say something like this. Trump plans to cite advice of lawyers in hush money case defense, if we could bring up this headline. And that is not technically true. There's a ton of headlines that say that. And if you read the articles, you get a little bit of like nuance, but it's not actually true. Um, they're going to be invoking, they're not gonna be invoking a formal advice of counsel de- defense in this, okay? But they signaled in a court filing that Trump will argue he did not intend to break the law, quote, because of his awareness that various lawyers were involved. Those are not the same thing. Basically, what he plans to say is he couldn't have known it was illegal because there were lawyers around and surely they would have stopped him if he was going to do something illegal. That is not advice of counsel. That's not really a defense at all. I don't know what that is, but that's what his defense is going to be. And so you might wonder, well, if that's the pathetic version, why not actually do the advice of counsel, which is a real defense strategy? Well, an advice of counsel defense would require that Trump prove he acted on the advice of lawyers, including proving he fully disclosed his actions to lawyers, asked for advice, learned his conduct was legal, and acted in good faith. Now, in theory, if he had done all of that stuff, and then had committed something that turned out to be a crime, that could be a defense against the crime. And you could sort of understand why that would be. If you do all of that due diligence and they lead you astray, well, at that point, it seems like you really didn't know that it was illegal. But he's not doing that because he didn't do any of that. He didn't ask for advice. He wasn't told that it was legal. And there's very much a reason to believe that the hush money payments he was paying, and more importantly, the fact that he, after the fact, tried to classify them as legal expenses, which they 100% were not, was a crime. And so I get why he's not taking that defense. The thing that he's throwing out, I don't even know what that is or what effect that's gonna have in the trial, but Sharon, I am curious about your opinion. I mean, he left out the part where he directed every, the lawyers didn't tell him to do it. He told the lawyers and everyone else, this is what we're doing here. But he seems to be getting away with these delay tactics and just throwing nonsense against the wall to see if it sticks. I mean, after all, he's not an attorney, but someone is putting together these briefs and filing them with the court. And I would think that any respectable lawyer, well, first of all, wouldn't be represented him perhaps, but any respectable yeah. lawyer would say, I I can't write that, I'll be a laughing stock. I'll get in trouble with the judge. But he seems to get away with this time and time again. Yeah, yeah, I we'll see. He's getting in a little bit of trouble with the judge. Not trouble, really, but the other update is um, that after he sought a delay in this trial, which, by the way, is coming up on March 25th, 12 days from now, as of when we're filming, the judge told him that he now needs to get permission before filing any more motions. <laughs> which I'm not a lawyer, but that's hilarious. <laughs> I feel like you just got <laughs> scolded by your parent. Like you've lost your privileges to file motions, which doesn't seem normal. God, his legal team sucks. And look, wow. some of them just legitimately are out of their league, like Alina Haba. But then on the others, I have at least a little bit of sympathy because he's clearly ordering them to do stuff yeah. that doesn't make any sense. And what are they supposed to do? Like, I guess they have to do it. But in any event, um, that's going to be coming up in 12 days. And I want to remind you all of the stakes in this, okay? Uh, If he's found guilty, he could spend between one and four years in prison. 
And uh, there's reason to believe that that could happen because I will again remind you, uh, Michael Cohen already served a three year prison sentence on related charges. Like a guy has already gone to prison and he isn't even the guy who ordered it. He isn't even the guy who had the affair. And by the way, payment of a hush money, payment of hush money for a non disclosure agreement is not in and of itself illegal. Okay, it might be immoral or unethical. It's not illegal, but it's the fact that he recorded the expenses as legal fees in the argument of Alan Bragg doing that to help to hide them from people, but also more importantly, to evade campaign finance laws. That that's what makes it illegal in this case, more than just, you know, an unethical thing that theoretically has led to a lot of really tense nights with Melania. I don't know, but it's coming up a couple of weeks. Sharon, any thoughts about how this could go? I mean, Michael Cohen did go to prison already. What do you think? Uh, I'm just not hopeful. It makes sense, okay? You've laid it out, been very analytical about, well, Michael Cohen, so shouldn't the guy who masterminded it, okay? Usually the hitman tells, okay, and gets a lighter sentence. But in this case, I don't. I think Trump can very well be found guilty, and I can't wait till Stormy testifies. But as far as punishment, and you know, wearing a jumpsuit or Rikers Island, forget it. It's just no. Yeah. no. Don't kill my vibe. But yeah, I'm you're probably sorry. right. And look, I, I I don't think it's one of the more serious crimes that he committed. It's it's top ten probably, but not one of the most serious. Uh, it, but especially because. He wasn't really trying to hide it from us. Like we already know that he's a dirt ball. He was trying to hide it from his voters. They should be mad about this. As always, they're not, but they should be. And, and in closing, I just want to mention one thing. So uh, the reason that he now has had his motions privileges taken away is that he sought a delay in the trial. And he does this every day, seemingly. And um, I think we can put this to rest now because the argument from Trump was, I can't be doing all these court dates, I'm running for president. Well, hold up a second there, buddy. You just locked down the Republican nomination yesterday. The RNC is not until mid July. Looks like you've got like a three and a half month span where you don't have much you have to do. Sure, you could do rallies, but it's not like you're in the fight of your life against Nikki Haley. You've got this thing. The full general election doesn't start for months. I feel like we should pack your uh, your cases in right here because we wouldn't want them to wait until after the RNC. That would truly hurt your ability to campaign against Joe Biden. It seems like now is the perfect time to adjudicate all of this. Based on everything you've said about your schedule, that seems like the inescapable uh, conclusion. That's my thought, Sharon. Any final thoughts uh, before and we move on? I think you're exactly right. Let's get this done. Let's go ahead and adjudicate all of these things. You have nothing pressing to do. He's already said his opponents unwell mentally. So let's just <laughs> get it in now, finish it up, and then you guys can go to your corners and, and we'll figure out the election after that. But you've got to take care of this first. Sounds exactly. reasonable. It does. Joe Biden can go to his corner of the White House and you can go to your corner <laughs> of maybe a cell. Uh, although probably not for this, I agree with uh, Sharon there. <laughs>